We're glad to know you're still there. Uh, it's time to go to the press to see what made it to the front pages of the national dailies or some of our national dailies. And our guest this morning, as usual, is uh, Mr. Chris Kainde Wandu, chartered arbitrator in the UK. He is here in Lagos State. Good morning and thanks for joining us, Chris. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Okay. Um, we begin this morning with Punch newspaper, and the leading headline here is Federal Government, okay, Naira for crude. Federal Government panel proposes six months supply uh, for Dangote refinery. Uh, the writer is saying refinery to get 24 million barrels in two months. Uh, fresh concerns over NNPCL sold petrol buyers role. Uh, let's hear your take. Six months. Uh, I, I thought it was going to be an ongoing process, but they say after six months it was, it's going to be reviewed because, according to them, uh, crude is an international product and it is priced in dollars. So they will review it after six months to see whether it can continue uh, the Naira uh, to dollar okay the naira the crude sale in naira after six months what is your take yes every contract uh, every contractual agreement has a time frame so um so it's a contract so if the contract is for six months it is for six months why is it a contract in the stands. first place why why should it be like it's a contract that needs to be renewed why shouldn't it be that if there's a refinery in nigeria you want to buy you buy in naira why does it have to be a contract signed by somebody? It's business. Where is business? Every business has, has a contract for it. It's business. It's not, a, it's not just go and pack. You don't just go and pack it. And just, it's, it's, a, it's a business. It's a contract. In, in that contract, there are so many things, uh, including arbitration, uh, we're going to uh, arbitration clause, they're going to be first major, there are going to be a lot of things. There's a lot of things embedded. In, in contracts, so you don't just say, "Oh, come and be packing or supplying you uh, the good oil." Uh, I said, "No," because in the course of that, even within one week or two weeks, something may come up. Something might just come up, and somebody may breach that agreement. Then it has to be a way of going to court or arbitration. So it's not just so; it's a contract. Don't forget that also. Um, um, the NNPC or the federal government has some level of about seventy percent, seventy percent or six percent share holding right. in Dangote. That also is a contract. Initially, it was supposed to be about twenty-two percent or, or, or thereabouts that the um, NNPC, for whatever reason, couldn't meet up to that obligation and decided to stick within uh, that. So, but the most important thing for me and for every Nigerian is that this narrative to crude uh, as it were. We need to bring down the cost of petroleum products from Dangote oil or Dangote refinery. That is one. Two, when will the NNPC refineries start working? Those are the German issues. So whatever whatever level of supply they are giving Dangote or how many months or whatever, what Nigerians want to know that want to have enough petroleum products in Nigeria at a very, very good affordable price. That for now has not been because the belief in so many quarters as been by Nigerians was that the thoughts that with the coming on stream of Dangote petroleum that the product is going to come down to a reasonable price, probably the half the price of uh, imported products. Uh, when you look at the takeaways, when you look at when you take away the freight costs, the taxes, the landing, all those taxes that um, imported petroleum products have. Uh, Hard, but it's not yet to rule, and then um, Dangote is as much as uh, is as expensive as the imported uh, products. Although, uh, from what we learned, NNPC have been subsidizing most of those imported products. But as of yesterday, um, the NNPC have come out to say that um, it is not going to be the only um, taker of the petroleum product. You know, it was uh, said before that NNPC was going to be the only taker. Now, NNPC said no, it's going to be a free market. All other major marketers can now go directly to um, Dangote and get their product and sell at prices that they think is, uh, is commensurate. That in itself it means also that subsidy on those products uh, is removed. So, but let's hide this pans out. It was supposed to start on the 1st of October. Um, it's taking so much time. Uh, for this to come on stream today is seventh out there about. Yeah, they, they, they say it has started. Um, but they say it has started, but the, the product has not arrived. Dangote refinery. That's what Dangote was saying. 
uh, in, a, in the papers a few yeah. days ago. So, but the federal government says yeah. it has started. Yeah, that's what I say. That is what you know. It has always been a, a blame game between NPC and the Dangote. I think you don't even know what to believe. I don't know what to believe. Till now, Dangote have not come. The the NPC told us how much it was buying petrol. Uh, it was buying product from uh, from Dangote. I think it's at eight eight nine or there mm -hmm. And Dangote said it was that wasn't the cost. For them to come out and tell us how much is selling to him still today, that's in itself has been in, 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 in secrecy, like that, like the like the salaries of the members of the National Assembly, <laughs> and something is just being funny here. If somebody is not telling us the truth. Straight but as right. I said, as I repeat, the basic thing is very painful. But the basic thing is that we want to see this product in the market at a very very cheap and affordable rate. Nigeria, this uh, product, this code co is not going to be. And let me even say this, let me take this for that. Most often than not, we just believe that, oh, it's petroleum, petroleum. Do you know that there are close to about 20 or 30 byproducts from crude oil? Mm -hmm. When you buy crude, it's not only petroleum that comes out of it. There are so many other things, the other byproducts. Why is it that we're not talking about those byproducts as well? They are talking of, they even use um, um, jelly, all this jelly you use for cream, uh, fiber, and so many other things. So, what happened to those other products? When Dangote takes the petros, uh, petroleum from the crude, what are the other byproducts? What happened to them? How has that affected uh, affected the market for those products in Nigeria? So we should also be looking at that line that some of those things, like all these polythene bags and so many, uh, almost the last time I checked, it's close to about 20 byproducts that come from crude oil. So crude oil is not just only about petroleum. So we shouldn't make that mistake. So um, other, those other byproducts, that Dangote is going to extract from the crude oil is also that's going to impact on the economy and those other products that are supposed to be byproducts. But for me, the most important thing is that let the NPC come out and tell Nigerians when they are going to get the refineries working. They've moved the pool, they shifted the pool six times, till now they still cannot tell us when the refinery in Portacourt will take off. Top less of the one in the second one in Portacourt, the one in um, Kaduna and also the one in worry. Yeah, well, I don't know if Dangote is going to reduce the price of fuel, because if you know that in six months anything can happen, then you will be very careful about how you do things. You don't sell so that if it is taken away from you, the freebies are taken away from you, you run at a loss, because that's what I think is going to let happen. Me, let, that's why I was concerned it, that you give a timeline. Let me, let me put in this. When we were in, when we were in, in our secondary school days, and we are we are being taught economics, and as it comes, no, it was commerce in those days, as what is called localization of industries. Mm. I'm sure you remember vividly mm -hmm. that you, you remember that topic, localization of industries. Yeah. There are so many things that affect the localization of an industry. And one of the questions I've been asking is that when the Gute was going to build one of the biggest refineries in the world, why didn't the Gute also invest in oil wells? Have you asked yourself that question? Yeah, I think there was something said see? about okay. that. See, he has a, an oil well or something. Uh, we have an oil well. How many? What? What is coming out of the oil well? What that means? What is coming from his own oil well is not even enough to be able to service the environment. So what I'm saying is that he also could have also so that he does not start relying on people. He does not start relying on other. He does not start relying on NPC. He doesn't have to start relying on these uh, international oil companies for him to because if they bleed, then you cash code. If they don't supply him good, what happens? He have to start resorting to buying good from other part of the show. I thought that he would that why investing over twenty billion dollars in the refineries, he should have also find a way of also investing in how he can be able to get this product, crude oil in this step. Even with having lessons, he can also set other uh, other um, refineries and countries uh, across the globe. That is my personal opinion. But okay. now it just seems that if any boy anything happened to me, then we will just sit down and be waiting. And they can just be holding into ransom just at uh, doing present. That is not a good business sense. I don't know. I'm not a businessman. So <laughs> but that's my own personal opinion. Okay. Uh, well, uh, there's another headline, a small one uh, down uh, left corner. It's saying, Orlando, two foreign firms shortlisted to buy Trinidad's national refinery. Oando, the famous Oando, mm -hmm. if you know the stories around o Oando and the ownership and all that, they are yes, shortlisted to buy, they are shortlisted to buy the national like, refinery. I'm, 
Mm. I, I like the, that your use of the famous quote and unquote. Yeah. The famous uh, Orlando. Orlando is practically buying up everything in the oil industry. There was a time that we also had an uh, accusation made by uh, the former vice president that Orlando has practically put up so many uh, outlets or whatever of NABC. Uh, Orlando has bought up, I think, IG. I think Orlando has bought up IG um, mm. also, the Italian oil firm. So if it's moving to international. Uh, uh, waters or international, going international to buy all well and good. But the same question I'm going to ask is, what's that answer back down with it? How has this impacted on the lives of Nigeria? Not just making money. Rwanda has its own uh, um, petrol stations, I believe. How much is Rwanda selling petrol to Nigerians? So it is not business as business, 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 all this. If you make sure that the entry business and all you are just interested in is just profit and profit, profit, for goodness sake, and your profit or whatever you do is not a pattern to that of people, then that is, I'll tell you for free, that is the popular that used to be in those days. Uh, it's not just the way I those days. So months back, before this, uh, this there is a local petrol station. I will, I will call them out today because of what they are, the good job they are doing there. It's called Beavers. Have you heard of that petrol, petrol station? Mm. During the time of those scarcity in those in, in, in the last few months, whenever you go to that indigenous country, it's owned by one woman. Yeah. One, I don't know, she, I think she's from the West State or something. Whenever you go to that petrol station, their crisis is always constant. Yes. I have never. No petrol station, not even an NPC, does what to do. If you doubt me, go and make your research. I have particularly mentioned that petrol station. There are few, there are few at least. The wherever you see scarcity or whatever, that police station will always sell at regulated price, very good price. And you sure. see people I have up experience. There. That is a natural. Yes. You have okay, your experience it up. Yes. I'm telling you the truth. That, that is the fact. That is a Nigerian company. It's not even foreign. So if they can be doing that, then what stop other um, petroleum stations and the rest of them to get it? AP is owned by Nigeria, um, uh, MRS is owned by Nigeria, and uh, which other ones? All most of them are owned by Nigeria. But what has been their impact on the life of the people? If you see the way people, Nigerians are always praying for that, uh, that company, that the Bivas, I call it. I think it's Bivas. Bivas. The name is Bivas. Bivas, yeah. Yes, I think it's Bivas. That is the Bivas. So that is it. So what I'm saying is that impact. So whether Orlando is buying uh, Aramco, in Saudi Arabia or is by whichever is the um, petrol companies or whatever. The fact is that if it doesn't make any part in the life of Nigeria, then I, my, I don't care my concern the even my concern is even sad. is the issues around the ownership of Oando, uh, if you know them and then you find out this Oando is buying a foreign refinery when we have refineries in Nigeria that they could have bid it for something, uh, it tells us that uh, there is a problem. Because the people who own the land should be in the country. You forgot that there was also, also some link to is it Mauritius or whatever? What's what that country? That one country that was mentioned one time. That's Mota. You forgot that there are also others linked to Mota. Mm -hmm. so, refineries, some people have refineries in Mota or whatever. Uh, we have put the uh, petroleum products are being refined and brought to Nigeria. I don't want to live within the range of speculation. I'm a journalist, and I'm also a, a graduate of law. But the fact remains that for me, that's what is called CSR. Every company in Nigeria should be able to do that. I buy by, the, um, by, uh, buy by that. Corporate social responsibility. Your corporate social responsibility is also making sure you're investing in the life of people, in your locality, where you are operating. That is part of life. So what you give out is what matters. Because, let me even say this. No matter how rich you are, one day you are going to leave everything behind and you are going to go. What will you remember for the impact you make? Take a classical example. How many years now did, they have, did Adela die? Forget about politics. See, today, some people are still talking about MK or Adela, the former richest man in the whole of Africa. Mm -hmm. You need to know the lives that that man touched. The poor. There are many people that is sponsored his, his schools. How many videos that he was sponsoring? I mean, even within all the sectors, including sports. Remember that I gave him the pillar of, what's it now? Pillar of sports, right? Pillar of sports of, in Africa. Mm -hmm. He was practically investing in that. He even had Abdullah B. Forgotten the days of Abdullah B. Yeah. In the creative industry. 
So many, I remember vividly the story told by Nick Sonny Okusu, what, um, um, what um, uh, Abiola did for him. And so, that is for me. If the impact you make is not the money, it's not just about the money. You can become the richest. If you see other countries, other parts of the world, there was a man, there was a woman, there was a woman, who recently donated about 40 or 50 percent of her. She's a billionaire, she was a wife, and she's the wife of a billionaire in the U.S. She will donate almost 50 percent or 60 percent of her work to a university, running into billions of dollars. How many of our people are doing it here? They're all they are interested in just making profit and making profit. Yeah, well, <clears throat> everybody wants to say for, for the generations unborn, uh, and I always say that is a poverty mentality because if you can train your children well, they will it's make you their, their own money. Because was it Jackie Chan it or one of these uh, famous actors who said, I'm not going to give my money to my child because if he's w intelligent enough, he will make his own. If it is not, he's not intelligent enough, he will just waste it. So there are not two ways about it. He can either make his own or he will waste mine. Uh, which is not good for me. Okay, so uh, let's move to Vanguard. Uh, starting from what we see in uh, uh, the punch, Fubara camp opposes emergency rule as three killed secretariats uh, raised. Uh, um, Tinubu once against anarchy, PDP governor, governors, Clark back Fubara. Uh, that is on page two of the punch. But uh, we are taking uh, the one from, uh, we are linking that to the one on Vanguard newspaper. Rivers, five killed, local government headquarters set ablaze, chairman chased out. As Tinubu directs police to provide local government officers security, and there are so many um, uh, riders here, burning of council facilities, act of irresponsibility, that's according to Fubara. Um, Wiki, you can't win all fights, that is uh, Fubara telling Wiki. Inspect uh, Equerry Local Government Secretariat, police mum over attacks, IGP withdraws personnel, crisis may have security implications on Nigeria, Bode George, and so on and so forth. There, there are so many things happening in River State. The election has come, and uh, we won't say it has gone because there are litigations here and there, there are, there are court cases here and there that the people are threatening. I don't know if they have already reached the court or approached the courts or they are still. Uh, fine-tuning uh, what they, uh, they, 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 they will take to the courts. But here we are. In River State, there seem to be violence because of the election that happened. But I'd like to generally take your, your take on uh, not just the election, but the aftermath of this election. My brother, in similar claims, the head of the police in Nigeria uh, should, have been, should have resigned by now by what, based on what happened in, uh, in River State yesterday. In similar climes, that's where things work. It's for me, I think the police are taking a position, despite um, all the uh, press statements from the uh, Inspector General of Police, even the new Commissioner of Police in River State. The police have been compromised so well. Let's start from, let's start from the election. Two days to the election, the Federal High Court gave a directive that the Nigerian police should stay off the, uh, the election in. Uh, uh, river state mm. and all the police went off the streets you ask yourself what is the primary responsibility of the Germans? forget about the politics is it not the the, 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 the constitutional right that was given uh, of the police to secure life and property everywhere and anywhere in nigeria politics or no politics so the ways of uh, akimbo and just the Yesterday morning, before we wake up, the new commissioner of police, through the directive of the IG, we drew all police personnel at the, all the secretariats of um, the local government secretariat, giving room for hoodlums, dogs, and some political uh, political jobbers to storm the various um, secretariats of the local government in the river states. And unleash the hand. And we have security agencies in River State. You have the Nigerian police in River State. It is not within them to go to protect those facilities. Even if they are saying they are withdrawing and um, um, uh, uh, withdrawing for the distance since they are being occupied that place because of the skirmishes that happen. So, are they not supposed to keep some policemen on the ground to be able to make sure that this, this, um, uh, these facilities are secure? These are government facilities. Even if they are private. Facilities. 
is this within the police to make sure that every property in Nigeria is secured? That is why they are using our money to pay policemen. Policemen are not being paid from the pocket. They are not being paid from the pocket of the Inspector General of Police. They are paid by taxpayers' money, including that of people of River State. But we saw what happened. The police withdrew and gave opportunity. That is the second one. Third one. On the day of spinning of this local government, let them local government chair, the governor of the state said that they have some information at his disposal, credible information, that the next day that a, a particular state is mobilizing about 20, 2020 20 people from each ward or whatever, so that we go, we go to the secretariat to unleash men. That was 24 hours before what happened. Those are credible information. What did the police? So, in all this, so that is Nigeria. I saw the request statement issued by the president yesterday. Oh, uh, those that will go to God and the police should do his job, blah, blah, blah. Do we need the president to tell police to do his job? And that is why I said, in senior climes, today, the Inspector General of Police of Nigeria ought not to have a job. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, once we start doing the needful, then we'll continue to go on this trajectory. Well, yeah, but, uh, one of the, uh, the argument they are using, they are using the argument of the, the Federal High Court giving that injunction they should not uh, participate in the election, and that's the excuse they are giving for not being present. As I told you, I said, listen, I said the election has finished. How did they finish the election? Mm. The election finished on Saturday now. It's the primary responsibility of police is not to protect life and properties anywhere they are. So, was there election on Monday? So why were those properties not protected? That is what I'm asking. I said, let us leave politics, because I don't even want to go into the intrigues of what happened during the election. What I'm saying is the primary responsibility of the Nigerian police is to protect life and property mm -hmm. out of the young ground. And miscreant and um, whatever, we are going and boiling public institutions. It's like going to the answer. I'm sure there's, some, uh, there's so much to uh, the bread. I have been able to comment uh, the, uh, the people of the state for standing firm on the part of truth and doing what is right. I don't care whatever political party anybody belongs to. They belong to the people. And if people decide to now, because if you have the good of the people at heart and you call yourself a leader, you can be a of men on the same people that you say you love so much. Something has to give. And the other government, especially the president, come in and step in. I have an unbiased political um, um, uh, attitude toward what is going to be vested. Then, because before you know it, it may generate into ethnic um, um, clashes and river states. Mm -hmm. Now, certain ethnic groups, because especially the job people, say that they have been marginalized, they have been persecuted. Is what happened pre, um, after uh, with the uh, few government passed. We are in just for whatever reason, agitations, Niger Delta guys went back into the East and we are blowing up all the pipelines. We are saying we are not putting enough now. If we resort to that, then whatever little we think we are getting now, it will be worse for us. The economy will be rest. That is why the president has to be able to step in and make sure that the gladiators should just work and let river states breathe. And I will say it, I will say this again. It's only four years. The, the government has barely three years. If you think you don't be government, you have three years to mobilize, and the next election, vote him out, mm. and get whatever you want to, what, whoever you want to be there. But you continue to make life unbearable because of so-called structure you say you have, and the rest of them, and the people of Iba that are free. That is unacceptable, thing, and that should not be said to the president of the country. Okay. Well, we, we will see what is going to come up in the coming days. Uh, people are protesting, some others are for. They are for and against. It always happens in Nigeria. PDP is crying, APC is crying, some other people are crying, and uh, a lot of other people have come out to say that is a very, very fair election, it was good, and that and that. So we'll see what the coming days will hold for us. But now, this is where we have to drop it uh, this morning. We'd like to thank you, Chris, for coming on the show. Thank you very much. And my regards to our co-host. She's not here today. Send her my regards. <laughs> I know you miss her. Manage me. <laughs> okay, we'll I, I really I missed her. <laughs> Have a nice day, bro. You too. Mm -hmm.
you too. We were talking to Chris Kinder one the chartered arbitrator in the UK. Uh, he spoke to us from Lagos here. Uh, we were looking at the papers. Uh, right now, we'll take a break. When we return, we'll hit our first hot topic, which is women with disabilities and climate change. Stay with us. <laughs> 